All right. So I think I will introduce the topic and myself. My name is Louisa. I work with the Media and Information Literacy team at Deutsche Welle. And today's webinar is on how to run an ideathon, um, which is a new term. It's a play on the word hackathon, and you're going to learn all about it today. Um, and the person who is going to be hosting today's webinar is Jerry Sam. He's a journalist by profession, and he's also the deputy executive director in charge of programs at Plan Plus Bytes, one of our partner organizations in Ghana. And at Pen Plus Bytes, he oversees uh, the organization's three thematic areas of operations, including tech and good, goods governance, extractors and new media and innovations. And his main area of research is on the intersection of disruptive innovations, technology and governance. And he's currently working on empowering citizens to use new digital tools to participate in the governance process and demand transparency and accountability. So I would like to welcome Jerry now. Thank you for joining us. Hi, 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 Louisa. Hi, everyone. Um, you're all welcome to this webinar. Um, we're going to take you through how to organize an idea thing, um, taking ideas right from um, thinking process um, into an actual product. Um, I just will share with you this um, slides. Um, oops. Hello? Yeah, is it working? Okay. Perfect. Oh, just picking the slides now, just one sec. Okay, here we are, finally. Okay, so um, this is a new idea that we came up with um, in doing a program with the DW Academy under our mail program. And we wanted to find um, ideas and solutions to uh, fight the fake uh, around elections. So um, instead of doing a full-blown hackathon, um, we adapted a hackathon into an idea thing. And um, idea thing basically is you know, bringing people together into a room uh, with different uh, backgrounds um, and um, different perspectives to come and brainstorm about you know, a particular problem statement or to even um, update or uh, refine an existing idea. And at the end of the day, experts will give their input and then the process carries on into developing a full-blown product, uh, an app, or just the idea and how to you know, make work better. So um, the first sli uh, slide is what's an idea thing? And as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's basically you know, um, inspired by the concept of a hackathon. Um, the only difference between the idea thing and the hackathon is that you don't necessarily uh, need software developers or ICT experts uh, as in programmers. Uh, they can be part, but it's not a necessity that you have to. You, you find out when we go to the later slides um, where you can even have internal idea thing. Uh, amongst just your staff members, uh, the accounting staff, you can have the programmers, um, you can have the office uh, normal um, uh, directors as well. And you can have external idea terms too. So we'll, we'll talk about that when we get there. And um, idea term basically creates a platform to share new ideas for everyday issues. So at the moment in, in, in our office at Pen Plus Bytes, uh, the key thing we are you know, trying to ideate or come up with new ideas is mitigating strategies or mitigating plans as in uh, how we go about implementing our projects in the midst of the coronavirus, uh, especially during the shutdown where we cannot implement a lot of activities. Uh, it also provides opportunity for most affected by social issues to be part of the solution. So for instance, if it has to do with say street children or a particular sector of people that you want to develop a solution for them, you can invite them um, to this event as well. And then it presents a, uh, a competitive model to boost creative thinking and uncover innovative solutions. We'll come more to this when we talk about you know, the types of ideas. Uh, 
uh, but basically what it is is that um, you are getting uh, wisdom from the crowd. So it's crowdsourcing for ideas. Um, people that you don't expect that they will come up with new ideas will come in and give you different ideas. And of course, it provides a fun and exciting way of idea generation. Instead of tying people in the box and telling them to come up with proposals or write ideas on paper, this is an open uh, forum where everybody can throw in any idea at all that comes to head uh, to you know, uh, provide solutions to a defined, <clears throat> a defined problem. And of course, sometimes it comes with a little bit of competition, which makes it fun. Uh, uh, the competition also makes people take it serious and, and, and then also go ahead with you know, coming up with new ideas. Okay, so the types of idea thing that we have. So um, we have internal one, which is an innovating crowdsourcing ideas from existing employees. So this is um, uh, finding a solution with an organization. So there could probably be an existing project or an existing product that the organization has. <clears throat> and the organization wants to amplify its effectiveness or wants to come up with new plans for it. So for instance, um, if the organization is supposed to do a face-to-face -face event, or training, for instance, um, which is not possible in the current context of the coronavirus, where we can't do face-to-face -face events. Uh, Ideaton provides you know, a, a, a platform for employees to come up uh, with different ideas of you know, how to implement such face-to-face -face, uh, uh, programs. Some of them can be uh, you know, a webinar, for instance, or online-based uh, process or ideas of implementing such projects. It also helps in identifying training needs of uh, uh, staff. So for instance, during the idea, then things come up that requires extra capacities within the organization. Uh, then it comes up that you'll be able to gauge and see that, okay, for this new idea, we don't have that existing capacity in the organization. Idea then brings out that uh, opportunity for you to undertake new training uh, needs for uh, staff. And then it encourages in a platform for team building learning and development and innovation. The key thing here is that um, idea things should be treated as a one-time off event, but then it should be regular. Uh, if it can be held, say, two times in a month or once in a month, because it's fun. You know, once you dedicate one Friday in a, in a month uh, for a particular project or a particular um, area in the organization that you want to generate new ideas, and this is the platform to do. Of course, you can get so many ideas, but it does not necessarily mean that um, you have to implement them now, and now uh, just as it comes. It can be shelved and then you know, used in, in later time. We also have external types of idea then. This is also unique. Um, it actually requires a lot of planning because it means that you're engaging a lot of people coming from outside, um, challenges in you know, selecting the right participants. Um, the difference here is that new ideas can come up and you know, uh, participants from outside organization can go and share it elsewhere, which is different from the internal type. The internal type, all the ideas come stays within the organization. Uh, it brings a, a time for you to test ideas from outsiders. So you have uh, outsiders coming in with objective uh, solutions, you know, devoid of uh, what the organization's interests are. And the more the merrier, because you're getting more people from outside who uh, don't know what exactly you do but then can come up with, you know, really innovative and destructive stuff that can help in your organization. And finally, it's actually a fertile ground for recruitment. You know, whilst doing the outside, um, um, getting external people to come, then you get to know, you know, what uh, their capabilities are, those who are not your internal staff, what their capabilities are. Uh, also, you get to know how they keep time, because idea things always comes with time, how they keep time, how they execute tax how they play as a team, because idea thing always comes, uh, how one of the key functionalities of it is uh, people working in teams. So you can you know, have either an internal one, which is more advisable, but then if you need extra eyes looking into the pot, then you can think of external ones where you can bring in external people or external experts to be part of your idea thing. So types of engagement during an idea thing. So you can have an on-site one. So recently, what Pen Plus Vita and DWB organized in Ghana was an on-site one. Um, it's a bit expensive because you have to get a venue. You have to provide catering uh, for the people who will be coming. Um, you have to do timelines and all of that. So the on-site one, physically, you have to bring people together, uh, which requires a bit of you know, a long-time planning. 
And then you have the online um, uh, ideation, which basically you have to use a platform. So we can use a Zoom, we can use an Asana platform uh, and share the problem statements there and get people to contribute and present their ideas online. And then you can have the hybrid form. So the hybrid form is, uh, as is the name says, a combination of the two above. Um, you have online um, discussions or ideas, and then you have a dedicated venue where uh, the teams will come and present their ideas and the judges will go over it. So you have a few prerequisites of organizing an idea thing. Um, first of all, you need to get a problem statement, which is the idea or the objective of the, of the idea thing. Uh, the problem statement will basically define clearly what, what you want to achieve out of the idea thing. Um, the why you want to have that idea thing, what exactly you need, uh, what is the need that you, you need to uh, resolve, and really um, how is it going to be used or who is going to use it, your target audience. So the objective of the problem statement will have to capture all of this. And then you have to create an enabling environment. I mean, an environment where people can easily express their views or ideas without any inhibitions. Um, and also uh, what will make people be more innovative and think. So is it being in an in a open space in a garden, for instance, that will work? Or is it being in a classroom structure that will work? So you have to, I mean, there's no, um, straight and fast rules about organizing the idea thing. It's what works for your institution is what you need to adapt. And one of the key things is that people have to research. So it's also important that you provide internet or computers that people can test some of their ideas uh, online or find out what other people are doing. You need to provide flip charts and markers, uh, whiteboards and chalkboards people can write out their ideas. And of course, you need to have the, the venue and the catering. One of the key things also that you need to develop uh, in, in implementing the idea thing is that you need to come up with a series of tasks, which uh, will come up to later on. So the tasks for uh, the various teams to, to undertake. So basically uh, look at uh, what, what is trending, uh, look at uh, what other people are doing about that same idea or that same problem, uh, see what some of the challenges will be in implementing that a new idea, uh, how would you mitigate against those ideas? What are some of your sustainability plans? What tool or what app will best solve that problem? So all those things have to be looked at. How are you going to market the idea, for instance? You know, not market just to the general public, but even market it to your bosses at work. That, yes, we did this idea thing on this particular uh, problem, and this is the solution that we came up with. So as, as you see um, in the uh, visual, the first stage is the idea thing or the problem statement, organizing it, finding uh, venues and uh, venue catering, and also all the um, materials that you need. Selection of participants is very, very important because you need the right people in the room. You need a combination of um, different people, different perspectives. So if it's an organization, as I mentioned earlier, do the accounts people who, who are the money holders be, in the, be part of the idea thing who can put codes and say this idea is too expensive to implement by the organization or not. Um, program managers who are going to implement the idea. Uh, volunteers who give you different, different ideas about you know, how they can help. Then you need judges. Judges who will be able to um, give feedback and question some of the ideas to see whether they are um, usable or sustainable. And then after that, you, you submit the idea and of course, if you can't afford, you, you know, you give prizes at the end of it. So how, to, how do you run an idea thing? So um, in the first instance, you need to, once you've done your problem statement, you need to identify your community where uh, uh, the idea really, really affects so that you can identify them as participants. You need to define rules and scheduling. So this is basically how the program will look like for the you know, duration of the idea thing. Um, just to mention here that usually the idea thing, depending on the scope of the challenge or the problem, can be 24 hours, but you know, best practice usually is 48 hours, so you carry it you know, over two days. And then um, after the scheduling, then you have presentation of ideas, that's a competition, and then you worry about the post-idea uh, idea thing tasks. 
So the first bit is the participation, uh, uh, participant selection. So as I mentioned, you, you have to identify your uh, target community. And this target community has to be people whom uh, are directly involved in that particular challenge or whom those uh, particular uh, challenge affects most. So if it's um, going to be say, a training program for journalists, uh, then you will need uh, trainers in that particular idea then. You need some journalists, the beneficiaries in that idea then. Uh, if you make use of an, an online platform, then you may need programmers in that idea then. Uh, another example could be, um, how do you get the office to function uh, uh, in, in the midst of a lockdown due to coronavirus? Then you need staff members in there. Uh, are you going to use online applications? Then you need an online developer to be part of it. Uh, you may need outsiders who have done it before uh, to come and input into it. The once you identify these key community stakeholders and partners, um, then you define your participant criteria. So the participant criteria basically is uh, assigning people to teams. Usually ideas, and especially the on-site one, you have teams. Even the online one, you can't actually do teams who, you know, uh, brainstorm on different tasks that you assign, and then you enroll the participants. Once you enroll them, then we'll go to the um, next stage, which is um, moderators and mentors. Um, in this instance, uh, they are not part of the teams, but then they give, um, they give advice, they give uh, uh, mentorship, they let their experience come to bear. So they will come and suggest to you that, yes, this idea is being done by Pemplasvite, this idea is being done by DW Academy, and this is how they do it. How do you modify it or how do you uh, update it to make it suitable for your working environment? Uh, so these are work, the work of the moderators and mentors. So they come in to share knowledge and they're usually experts in the field. And sometimes we use the moderators and the mentors to be the judges at the end of the, of the, at the, end of the idea thing. And then you define the timelines and schedule. So the timelines basically will start with uh, the moderator uh, uh, presenting the problem. It's always good to present the problem, give some background information or data about the problem. Um, so tell them that, yes, it's because of coronavirus that we are not able to meet. We need to deliver on A, B, C, D, uh, which has timelines that we need to deliver on. Um, what options do we have to still carry on working from home? Uh, what options do we have in still engaging the donor, for instance? And once you give them the timelines and the schedule, um, you have times for uh, brainstorming. You have times for speed idea thing, which is basically sharing ideas of varied proportions or uh, uh, different ideas. The team will now um, work around and see which ones are the best ideas. And um, the next one is, of course, you have to incorporate hands-on activities. So the hands-on activities I, I mentioned a bit before, which are developing tasks for the team to accomplish. So some of the tasks is researching to find out what others are doing, what are the trends, uh, what uh, the organization has done in the past that worked, that can be modified or adapted uh, uh, for the organization. Um, doing sketches, uh, doing uh, diagrams and infographs to see how you know, different ideas are related or interconnected or are not even connected. Then you have to reduce barriers uh, to participation, which is in the team's formation. So you have to uh, at least get a team, a team member of a different background so that their inputs are always uh, necessary and required. So um, typically, if you have a staff, you have a, a finance person, uh, definitely the finance person will have to talk because they will come and tell you about um, uh, what's, what the cost involved. The programmer in the team will also will definitely will have to talk because they have to tell you about actual on the grounds implementation, what is required. And then the software person will tell you that this idea cannot be, you know, be made online or it's not feasible to actually have this particular idea online. And then um, you have to support the teams to design projects. So the support here also comes from the mentors who will come around whilst the um, idea, idea thing is ongoing. They will visit each team uh, and then give them uh, uh, um, support in terms of direction as to, okay, it's better to do it this way or that way. So it's a continuous you know, ongoing program. And then the competition itself. So this is after all the, um, the teams have done their work and it's time for them to sub submit their ideas. So there are rules for competition. 
some of the rules that you set out, which is simple, is basically um, whether they clearly define the problem, whether they find a, a, a clear, direct solution to the problem. Um, some of the rules also be that uh, if they're able to develop a sustainability or mitigation plan around that, that problem, and then also how they're going to roll out um, or the cost involved in rolling out. So those are some of the rules. And once they are able to come up with the rules and uh, it's being validated by the judges, they finalize the project uh, proposals, they make the presentations, and then they eval evaluate the projects and select, and then uh, evaluate, evaluating the projects and selecting the winner is done by the judges. So the judges will you know, go through all the competition rules, whether they satisfied all the rules, and then they select a winner out of it. So what do you do after the idea thing? This is also very, very important so that um, the ideas do not you know, become uh, white elephant, elephants or you know, basically wasting the time of everybody's. Make sure that you know, the ideas that come up at the end of the day are tangible enough um, that will, will require some funding. So you need to identify uh, key funding sources for your idea. Uh, to implement is the organization you know internally able to generate funds to implement it or they will seek outside sources to to implement that idea or project um, is it possible they can have seed funding for it and then you know plans for sustainability once the uh, ideas are implemented and all this is done through a mentorship program uh, where you have you know if it's just the judges to so have um, the judges are around and they have the expertise or the mentors who have the expertise will guide through, uh, will guide organization through implementing the ideas. So the key things to remember is that you have to have a clear objective or a problem statement, which, which will guide, you know, what approach um, you're going to use. So are you going to, you know, once your problem statement or your objective is clear, are you going to adapt an internal idea thing or you do an external idea thing? So the problem statement will actually tell you uh, what, um, mode of engagement you're going to use. So the mode of engagement, you know, um, basically in, uh, how you're going to interact. Uh, are you going to do online? Are you going to do on-site? Or are you going to do a hybrid of them? You know, all this will come from your problem state statement, which also will define the scope of, of, the, of, the, of the idea thing. And then participant selection is, you know, is very key in getting realistic solutions. So, I mean, you, you do yourself good if you select participants who uh, relate to your problem state statement or your problem objective. And whilst you're doing the idea thing, I mean, once you select the participants and you put them in groups, you know, always encourage everybody to come up with you know, as many ideas as possible to that particular problem statement. And always remind them that, you know, no idea is silly or unnecessary. You know, an idea can come out which can relate to an existing idea and that can be used to you know, refine the idea and go ahead with it. And then all ideas are winning ideas. You know, when we're doing uh, our uh, meal, um, meal uh, uh, idea thing, we have so many ideas, which, you know, most of them were very good, uh, which we have shelved. We have some key ones, but then are, we have shelved them. You, know, you never know when you need those ideas and you can go back to it. And it's always good to go, you know, for the low, you know, low hanging fruits. Um, the ones that you know um, you can easily implement, and then you can build on it afterwards. So uh, once once you pick the idea, it's not automatic that you have to implement every single idea that comes up to its full blown uh, uh, scope. But then you can actually stagger implementation of the ideas once once you come up with a final unique idea. So I'll share with you um, the Ghana experience. So we have a Ghana um, example, which is the idea thing, uh, mail elections 2020. Um, the whole idea was to develop a destructive idea tool, either an idea tool app or a feature, which will enable the youth uh, counter uh, fake, uh, fake content or cyberbullying during the Ghana elections 2020. And the key participants we selected were the youth uh, because it affected them. We thought that they, you know, they were the, you know, at the end, they were going to be the users or the target users. Academia. Uh, we brought in media partitioners, filmmakers, and then we had programmers and web designers because um, we had an app in there, we had a tool in there, but not necessarily that we're you know, looking to generate any of those. You find out that a winning idea actually has nothing to do with um, generating a, 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 your typical digital tool. And we had two days uh, for ideas generation. 
So the field, we had a team, a team formation. So we had a, a couple of programmers there. So uh, the team formation, we had two teams. Ideally, it's good to have three teams, but we, we had two teams because we did not have the full scope of participants. So we had to, you know, um, innovate around even the participants and the team, uh, team, uh, team making. Uh, we had two teams during this period, and the programmers who were available were the um, mentors. And then we presented to them the problems and the tasks for the teams to accomplish. So the key task was to find out what are the trending uh, areas in, in um, misinformation online, uh, how it is done, uh, or what other organizations are doing to fight the fake, uh, what are some of the challenges that you will face in coming up with uh, solutions to fight the fake, uh, what are the mitigating strategies, marketing plan, sustainability plan, uh, what tool will best solve our um, problem, paying attention to persons with disabilities, paying attention to persons who cannot read and write, uh, would it be online or offline? So all this came up uh, with, the, with, the, with the program and pre uh, program presentation. So the idea then, uh, session, so we had um, different segments or different sessions for, for the idea then. So we had long sessions for brainstorming, so that you find, you see the picture in a bit. So we had teams in groups working, some went outside, some inside using flip charts, um, searching online, and one person collating ideas, all written on the, um, on, the, uh, uh, on the flip charts. And then the mentors were going around to find some ideas and share experiences on the speed mentoring. So the speed mentoring can be done you know, at any time or different intervals, depending on you know, what your problem or challenge is, if they need to be hands on. And then we, did a, um, we had a session called Idea It, which was basically a session for group presentations on top ideas or two at most. So the groups came up with um, two, uh, two, two ideas each uh, they presented. Of course, they had more ideas you know, within the groups, but then the teams amongst themselves decided which two ideas uh, best you know, solves the problem and they presented them. And it was you know, reviewed by the mentors and even there was you know, um, a group review as well and the teams went back to build up on the ideas. And on the second day, uh, after the first day, they went up to uh, you know, build up on the ideas. On the second day, they came to pitch their ideas. For us, during this idea thing, we did not have a full uh, spectrum of judges. So what we did was that we made everybody a judge. So you know, this, is, this actually shows how flexible an idea thing is in, in generating ideas. Uh, in generating ideas or generating new ways of doing things. Um, so each person, each participant became an, a, a judge. Uh, each participant was given a score sheet and then the score sheet uh, was used to basically grade each idea. So um, the, thing, the key things that the uh, judges looked out for was a clear definition of the problem scope, the theory of change, uh, activities in, in implementing the idea and also how they're going to market it, and then the sustainability strategy of the idea. So there was, you know, of course, Q&A with the judges. So all the participants were at liberty to ask um, the presenters uh, questions. Uh, uh, some of the key questions you know, actually bordered on sustainability and then funding for the ideas. And then the, um, the scoring was done on a score sheet and was collated by one uh, score master. So these are some of the ideas that came up um, from the Ghana presentations. So there was a, an idea on, on Truth Squad. This is all working towards finding solutions to uh, fight fake content during Ghana elections 2020. Uh, one of the uh, key, um, one of the teams came up with a Truth Squad or a Truthometer, uh, which was to look at all content. So we had, um, they were going to build a social media tracking tool that will track all information that is posted on social media. And people actually also can uh, send information to the, the platform that we're going to build uh, for verification. Once they verify news and uh, uh, find the, um, what the true story is, then they will share it out to, to uh, the public, especially to the youth. And one of the key ways they're going to share it out was true alerts and statements on WhatsApp, on YouTube, on Facebook and then of course on their main platform. 
and one of the um, ways that we were going to also reach out was um, to do spot interviews, uh, to do um, dem demos in markets, uh, on the streets, in schools, uh, social media engagements, use influencers, and do SMS blast on it as well. And it was going to be on a subscription base. So basically, the idea was to look at uh, fake content online, counter the fake content online, and then share the real story per the uh, uh, fake content that they, they come up with. And then there was another, the, uh, another idea, which actually came out to be the winning idea, was the truth or there or black or white. So people will be presented with um, content which looks like true, but untrue, or manipulated. And it will be like a street box pop, and people are, are asked to identify um, which, which, of the, which of the content they think is true. And once they're able to get the answers correct, then they are given a prize. The beauty of this one is that, you know, it can be done on the street using um, just a simple phone. Uh, you don't need to build an online platform for it, but then it will have to be, you know, broadcasted by a media house, uh, for instance, or it can be, the content can be put on YouTube. So if there's a trending news about um, coronavirus, um, uh, can cure through um, uh, going out in the sun, for instance, uh, the, that question is asked uh, to anybody on the street, to the average one on the street to ask them, do they know if this is true or not? And once they get it right, they get you know, a token for getting it right. And then you know, by, they answering the, uh, by they answering the question correctly, uh, it is broadcasted to everybody who is watching that content. And it, it's a way of educating uh, the public on what is true and what is not. So here's the teams. So um, this is during the teams presentations. Uh, so this is team one, and all the participants you see are the participants who participated in the in the idea thing. Uh, and then here is also team two presenting their ideas. So as you can see, the arrangement is quite uh, informal. Uh, people were at ease, and, and I think that's the way to go um, so that nobody feels uh, inhibited in sharing ideas. And uh, as I said, no idea is you know, a silly idea or it's a wrong idea. And everybody was asked to you know, share whatever comes to mind and they participated fully. So here is the winning idea. Um, so it's a spot the fake, uh, stop to check. So it's a short, it's a, um, a short segment two to three minutes uh, on prime time news. That's the target that we wanted to use uh, on a well-known media program. So it can be a segment in prime time news or a segment in a very popular uh, TV program uh, and also can be shared on YouTube channel, uh, highlighting real and fake images, videos and audio files. And then participants select which one is to engage, uh, which one is to, uh, which one is, uh, which is which, which is the correct one. And they engage their minds to think critically about the content uh, consumption behavior and how such manipulative content is developed. And you see, in doing this, what we do is that um, a particular situation is, is manipulated uh, to come as close as the fake content so that people can actually validate and critically think and see through where the manipulation happened. Um, once we get a lot of entries, people responding, uh, it can also be in the phone, phone, phone in. So uh, an image can be displayed on screen uh, and people can call in to tell you uh, spots, spots where the uh, fake is or spots where the uh, manipulation is. And once they do that, their numbers are collected. Uh, once the entries are done um, in real time, the winners are announced in subsequent shows. And at the education special segments on how to, you know, and after that, then we do an educational program on how to verify fake images, videos, and audios. So that's it. Done here. Thank you I'll so hand much. Over to Louisa. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you can stop sharing your screen now if you like. We have okay. quite a few questions. Um, but before we got to them, I actually wanted to ask you a question myself. And I wanted to ask if you could just provide us with a little bit of context about fake news in Ghana um, and what the situation is and how much of a problem it is, especially so, considering their elections. Okay, so I mean, uh, in Ghana at the moment, um, well, at the moment, everything is um, 
all about the all-consuming, how to avoid a coronavirus. But in the lead up to elections, what we usually have is um, generation or creation of a lot of um, online platforms, which, which really, uh, that is not related to any media house. So individuals sit in their houses and create those platforms. And then they look at content. So for instance, if it's um, a speech done by a presidential candidate or parliamentary candidate, then they can, they can twist it or they can use their images to do a picture quotation to say that this is what this candidate said. So that they, we get quite a lot of um, manipulation of content and mis misinformation and disinformation. Um, and it's quite prevalent because people can easily do uh, visualization of content and they can attach um, a, a well-known TV station's logo on it, you know, to give it a sense of credibility. So yes, during elections, we do get quite a lot of, you know, those sort of um, infographs and visualization. Also voiceovers. So we get voiceovers as well. So you we have a video of a candidate, but it's not their voice. Somebody actually doing a voiceover and telling you that this is what the candidate is saying. So it, it can be quite prevalent. And at the moment, the key channel of distribution is WhatsApp, which, which makes it difficult for us to counter them as well, because of course, WhatsApp, you know, is in groups and individual chats, and it's quite difficult to break in into that. Yeah, okay. And we actually have a question that ties into this. Um, somebody's asked why politicians, either from the ruling or the opposition parties, when included in the Ideathon 2020, because they're often the source of fake news? <laughs> That's a very good question. Um, we, we looked at it in the Media Information Literacy and our youth project. So for us, our key um, constituents or target group was the youth and how they can navigate online content. So uh, for us, the target was how the media, how they can consume uh, news, but not what the politicians do. So um, from that angle, most of the content that will influence the youth in how they participate in the, or engage in the trap process was what news they will get, but not necessarily what the politicians are saying, but how the news media will report those sort of content or uh, anybody else reporting the content, what the politicians have said and how they can verify it. So through the verification processes, for instance, how would they call, for instance, call the media house and find out is that exactly what the politicians said or how they can validate what the politicians are saying. Okay. But not really coming, the politician coming to participate to tell us how, uh, because they themselves don't know how to fight the fake. Um, mm -hmm. So it, we feel that, you know, the media who generate or, you know, either news generation processes were the key constituents and then the youth to educate them and inform them how it is done and how they can counter it. Okay. And we've got another question. Um, it's a little bit about how the team members found each other and how the teams were formed. Um, they've said that they understand how this might work on Slack, but they're wondering, um, you mentioned, did you mention teams? Is that how you put them together? Yes, yes yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, okay, go ahead. Are you done? Oh. Yeah, sorry, I was just going to repeat the question. Um, no, could you just explain a little bit how, how that worked, how that process worked? Okay, so we, we um, handpicked the teams based on our, our problem statements and our objective. So um, we wanted um, teams of, team of three uh, people, team made up of three people in three groups. So we handpicked um, people who will be journalists in the news, um, journalist trainers as well, and then the youth. So each team had a youth participant, had a journalist or media house, and then had a trainer in there. Okay. So that's so per, per your scope or your problem would, would define what sort of you know, people or your uh, community that you want to have the ideas in with. And how did they communicate? Was that via which platform? Okay, so the one we had was um, an on-site on-site uh, IDFN. So the engagement was done face-to-face. -face. 
Okay, great. But if, if you want to explore, explore online, uh, especially which is very, you know, um, uh, relevant in our times now um, to generate ideas amongst, you know, offices that have shut down, then you can do an online one. Um, you meet the first instance, and you know all the team members online, and then you assign roles, and then you assign teams. And then okay. you can shut off. Uh, they can go about uh, through that WhatsApp or through another uh, uh, segment in Zoom or on their own, go and discuss their ideas. And then the team can come all back together uh, on the group chat in the Zoom, and then they present their ideas. And the judges can be part of it, and they can ask their questions. OK, cool. And we've got something that adds on to this question. Somebody is asking how the, how, when you um, recruited the participants, how did you ensure diversity? And did the team members know each other beforehand or were they all strangers? Okay, so, um, so I will look at it from both the internal and external idea thing. So in internal idea thing, obviously if you are doing it within your organization, most, almost everybody will know the team member. If you have a small organization like Pen Plus Byte, everybody knows everybody. I, I, I know GW Academy is quite big, so it's, it's possible that some team members will not know some. But the internal one uh, is more likely that everybody will know everybody. But then the external one, uh, which you are bringing in experts from outside, then it, the probability that they don't know each other is high. But that does not defeat, defeat the purpose in putting them in groups. So putting them in groups is to always uh, pay attention to make sure that um, team members have varied backgrounds. So I kept on mention, uh, mentioning the, having somebody from finance uh, who do not do programming, having somebody from say m and &E, uh, who sometimes do not go on the field and having the uh, implementers or the program officers who go on the field themselves. So this three can form a team and they can come up. So the m &E person will ask all those um, outcomes and output questions. Uh, the finance person will give all the solutions in terms of money, uh, find out where we can find sources of money, what is doable, what is not doable. And of course, the uh, program imp implementer will tell you what is on the ground and how that can work. So you must always, you know, when assigning people to team, you have to always pay attention to giving, uh, making sure they come with varied backgrounds. If it has to do with something to do with persons with disability, then it's of, of course very important to bring in uh, persons with that disability. So if it has to do with somebody with a, you know, a, a program or a project about a hearing impairment, then you need to bring in somebody you know, in that population. If it has to do with uh, somebody who cannot see, or uh, yeah, if it has to do with um, visually impaired people, then you have to make sure that you know, it includes them. But there's no need um, generating an idea for a particular group of people and it's not relevant to them. So they have to be there and you know, their needs captured in the solutions. Okay, and actually this also ties into the next question, which is good. Um, so we've got someone who's saying that every region has its own complexities of, um, you know, due to the regional situation and problems related to media and information literacy, for example, with corona and um, coronavirus and fake information. Um, uh, but it also says that the donors um, have their own obligations uh, for issuing funds. Their question is, how is it possible to fine tune an idea based on regional problems with the global organ with global organization? So you have to put it, of course, as the question started, you know, have to, you know, it's, it's, a, it's the contest. So what, what's, what can the environment allow you to do? Mm. So if um, the donor requirement is that you have to meet a particular timeline, um, if you have to undertake a media information uh, literacy training, um, so if you have, say, a youth project where you have to do a face-to-face -face, uh, training, uh, with current with current uh, situation or the current coronavirus environment, you can't you can do face-to-face. -face. So is it possible that the training manual, for instance, is it possible to you know, turn it into uh, slides? Is it possible to do a video presentation of the manual and then turn it out online for the training to be done? So it depends on what, what you, you, know, you want to achieve at the end of the day and what will work best for you. There are certain things that cannot, cannot work at all online. And with that one, yes, unfortunately, you have to shelve it and then look at a, a later date to implement. Okay. And 
Somebody also wants to know what skills moderators should bring to get the best out of the teams and encourage them to develop ideas. Okay, so um, during OS, um, uh, my colleague Precious did a lot of the moderation because she's very vibrant. She's more vibrant than I am um, and can share jokes and entertaining. So you need to you know, get a moderator who will let people feel at ease in the first instance a moderator who um, knows the subject matter. The, 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 the person does not really need to know into, into detail, but knows the subject matter enough to even uh, present the problem statements uh, so that people can you know, uh, know exactly what you want to achieve out of it. And I mean, um, a bit of you know, jokes and joviality in there also helps to let people be at ease. And the moderator um, does not have to do it all because at the end of the day, you have mentors. So the mentors are the ones who actually go around and you know, um, give inputs uh, as to um, this is how it can be done well. If it's an online app, this is how you can actually develop an online app which is applicable to that particular uh, constituent or target group. Um, and the moderator basically you know, has to make, be a good timekeeper. Uh, we we'll have to make sure, going around to make sure that um, each team, but each team gets all members to participate. So yes, you need you need an active moderator. You need a a pleasant moderator. You need a vibrant moderator who will keep you know. That, of course, it's two days, or else people will get bored. So you need you know somebody going around to make sure that they're using all the tools available uh, and engaging. Yeah, yeah of course. Um, are there any more questions? We have a few more minutes, about 10 more minutes left. Um, I actually have another question in the meantime that I wanted to ask, and I just made some notes as you were talking. Um, so one of the things that we're also focusing on in this webinar series is lessons learned. And so I wanted to ask you, were there any things that you tried that you felt didn't work when you were trying to organize the ideathon? Um, anything that you would, uh, say something that you've you've done already, so we'll try not make the same mistake or something along those lines. So I think one of the key ones that um, we had a little bit of challenge was the participants. So we had in mind that we we're going to have um, three groups made up of three members in each group, but we couldn't come up with that. And the main reason being that we we handpicked the participants. Um, this was external as well. We handpicked the participants without any plan B or SX, SS uh, numbers. So in, in future, what we will probably do is that we we'll open up the, you know, um, the selection process a bit so that we don't have to be, you know, straight jackets that, okay, we need 12 people and it has to be those 12 people. So if somebody does not turn up, then you don't have anybody to call. So, you know, mm -hmm. once, you know, in future, what we we'll do is we we'll increase our pool of participants so that if there are any dropouts, we can quickly recruit uh, a new participant into it. Uh, so that was one of the things that, that did not work well for us. The other thing also was the judges, which also is the same uh, problem. So we handpicked the judges too, um, which you know is something that you normally do because you want um, experts with relevant uh, uh, expertise or skills in the area that you, you're trying to you know, ideate on. And we, we, we handpicked just three people, and at the end of the day, we had um, two. Uh, so we couldn't, you know, have two people be judges because, you know, you always need um, a third voice. So that did not work. And we quickly, you know, innovated around that challenge by, you know, making everybody a judge in a room, mm. which actually also worked very well because everybody, uh, in the end, uh, we all agreed that, you know, even it was team one of the teams that won. So the opposing team actually, some of the members in the opposing team actually scored the, the other team higher than they themselves. You know, <laughs> so it made it very, very fair and accepted. The final product was you know, far more accepted uh, than say three judges doing it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a little question here about um, having a shared understanding of the core problem that you're uh, running the ideas on to solve. And the question is, how do you make sure that everyone has the same understanding of the core problem and its causes? Okay, so that's why I started earlier. Um, I think if you see the slides, what I said, remember, the, you know, the first thing you need to do is the core problem and, or the statement or the objective. 
-hmm. And um, this is a good question, actually. So it gives us opportunity to discuss the uh, problem statement. Uh, usually, it's good to actually develop a problem statement that is relatable to the participants, uh, something that they can relate to. Uh, it needs to be uh, something also that will address uh, it will lead to addressing the problem that has been identified. Uh, the, problem, the problem statement should answer uh, your typical questions of why you need to find a solution, uh, what solution you're looking for, uh, what is needed you know, uh, to, to, to find that solution, and then also um, how usable would that solution be. So with that, with that clear understanding of the objective of the problem statement, then you can go ahead to find out, okay, I need this number of participants. I need to uh, undertake this idea thing either internally or I need to go out externally to do it. Or can I do it online? Can I do it on site? Can I do it in a hybrid form? So yes, the, I totally agree with the question uh, that yes, this, this is the first thing that you need to do uh, because it will, it will then devolve down to selecting participants and even you know, how the idea thing will pan out to be. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any more questions? Because if not, I think we will wrap up. Um, I'll just wait a few seconds. I think that's probably it. Um, Jerry, thank you so much for your time and thank you for such an interesting presentation. It's very informative. Um, and of course, yeah, of course. And your, the, um, the slides from your presentation, um, we will upload those as well to uh, Confluence and we'll make them available. Uh, to share amongst the project partners and DW Academy internally. And thank you everyone for joining us today.